5.3, we're doing solving polynomial equations. And we talked about this last week. But when you see this exponent right here, that's telling me how many solutions there are. So right off the bat, you can tell that there, there are going to be three solutions to this first equation. We know there are three. We don't know if they're real or imaginary, though. And so that's what makes this kind of hard. And so, you know, in, in the good old days, when we were trying to solve equations, you could just isolate the variable. And we've done that a million times. You subtract the two, you divide by three, we can isolate the variable. But as we get farther into math, the equations become a lot more difficult. We're not going to be able to isolate the variable on this problem number one. And so that's where this grouping method is going to come in. I'm going to show you some new methods for solving more complicated equations. It'd be awesome if we could just ISO the variable, but we can't. So grouping, you might remember from algebra class, what you did was you said, let's look at these two. We're going to do a GCF. And then we're going to look at the second two in a different group. Now, we actually want, we want a plus sign in between the two things. So I'm actually going to put my group around the negative. All right. So if you look at that first group and look at what's in common, what can I divide both of those by? Well, I see there are a couple of X's here. There's a GCF right there of X squared. So I'm going to write that down. And then we pull that out, we factor that out, we divide that out. If you want to look at it as reverse multiplication, look at it that way. x squared times 4x would equal 4x cubed. And then there's this plus sign. And x squared times 3 would get me back to that plus 3x squared. All right, so that's the first group. Now we're going to do the second group, the blue group. And we look at what's in common for those two. And I see both of these numbers are divisible by negative three. So I'm going to write down, a, you know, you can put that plus in you if you want, but I'm going to just call it minus three. My negative three, my minus three, I take that out, I divide that out, reverse multiplication, negative three times four x plus three. You'll know you're on the right track if you have a match, okay? We have to have these two things match. And if you mess up, they won't match. It's not going to work. So we've got this match. And what we do is we pretend like this is another grouping problem. Um, both of those two have a 4x plus 3 in common. So we write it down. And then essentially what I do is, is look at what's left. What's left, you've got this x squared minus 3. Now don't forget, this is equal 0. So we're trying to find the zeros. We're finding the solutions. We're finding the zeros. All right. Now, if we're finding the zeros, we've done this kind of a lot. Sometimes you can do it in your head and you just look at this and you say, what's going to make this zero? If you can do it in your head, great. If you can't do it in your head, you'll just say, okay, well, let's look at it this way. What's going to make this equal zero? And at this point, we can ISO the variable. We can subtract this three over. So 4x equals negative 3, and we can divide by this 4. You're going to get a fraction here, negative 3 fourths. So one of the solutions, we've got three solutions. One of those three solutions is negative 3 fourths. But there are two more. We know there are three solutions. There are two more. And so that's why we have to go over to here, and we say what's going to make this equal 0. Now, again, if you could do that in your head, that'd be great, but you're probably not going to be able to do that in your head. So let's just say, well, what's going to make this equal zero? That's the zero product property telling us that. And since there's only one variable in that equation, we can ISO it. We can isolate this. We're going to add this three over x squared equals three. And then we're going to take the square root of both sides. Now, here's something that everybody messes up. When you take the square root of both sides, you actually have to do plus or minus, okay? We know, you know, think about this equation. If I gave you x squared equals 16, you should know there are two solutions to that. There are two solutions to that. And so you square root both sides, and most people will just say it's four. Most people will only give me one solution, but there's got to be two. 
there's got to be two solutions. There's got to be two numbers that make that true, and it's actually plus or minus 4. Okay, negative 4 squared is also 16. So you have to do plus or minus. That's what's going to give you your second solution. X is going to equal square root of 3 and negative square root of 3. And so now we have our three solutions. So let's do another one. Let's, let's do number three. Same kind of deal. We're going to do grouping. First group, I can divide both those numbers by four. And they both have a couple of x's there. So I'm going to say 4x squared is my GCF on that first group. If you, if you take that out, we would be left with x plus 2. Think about it as reverse distributive property. And then I look at my second group. Again, I need a plus sign in between those two parentheses, so, so keep that in mind. Um, common factor of 3, both those numbers are divisible by 3. Take that out, x plus 2. And again, you'll know you're on the right track when you see that match right there, x plus 2, x plus 2. That's going to be a GCF for our next step, x plus 2. If we take that out, we would have 4x squared plus 3. So that's factored. We did the grouping method to factor that, but we still have to solve or find the zeros. Most people are pretty good at doing this one in their head. What number is going to make this zero? Negative two, right? Most people can just look at that and say negative two would make that zero. Negative two is a true would make a true statement. Negative two is a solution. Most people aren't as good at this one. So if you can't do it in your head, just make it equal to zero and isolate the variable. We can subtract the three over. We can divide by this four. X squared equals negative three fourths. And then we have to take the square root of both sides. The square root of both sides, don't forget it's gotta be plus or minus though. Now, remember back to when we did imaginary numbers. When you have a square root of a negative, your calculator's not going to work. Your calculator's not going to do that problem for you. Um, you just have to remember that the square root of a negative is going to be imaginary. Okay? So we're going to have whatever the square root of 3 is with an I on it over, don't forget to do your square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2. All right? Plus or minus that. And so we have our three solutions. We knew there were three solutions at the beginning, but your solutions are negative 2 and square root of 3 over 2i and negative square root of 3 over 2i. Incidentally, if you graphed this, if you drew a picture of this, does anybody know how many times you'd see it cross the axis, the x-axis? You'd only see it cross one time because this is the only real number solution. That graph is definitely going to cross at negative 2 right here. But that's it. That's the only place it's going to cross because that's the only real number solution. Let's move on. I want you to take a picture of these formulas. You're going to need them. You could always Google them and look them up, but it's nice to have them handy. You've got quadratic formula, which you should already know. You've got sum of cubes, difference of cubes. Now, also, you might look around the room and see those are on my wall. Quadratic formulas on that yellow sign over there on this wall. And sum of cubes and difference of cubes are actually on this poster over my head right here. It's kind of hard to see them. That's why I'd ask you to take a picture so you can have them anytime you want. Again, you could just Google them as well. So look at the sum of cubes and difference of cubes. I want to point something out to you. Okay. Um, notice. Uh, what happened? I'm lagging. Oh, my computer's really laggy right now. 
I want you to notice that that these this one and this one are the same and this one's different. Okay. Pay attention to the signs. It'll help you kind of remember what to do so you can do it faster. If this one's negative, then this one's negative and this one's plus. All right. There's just this, there's this relationship between the signs. Otherwise, everything is the same. You should also notice that the last term, the last one is always going to be a plus. Okay. Not a huge deal, but it, it helps, I think, to notice the pattern. Anyway, let's do a quadratic formula problem. Solve, uh, solve each equation, solve this using the quadratic formula. So, negative b plus or minus square root, this is b, so b squared is going to be 4 minus 4 times the a number is 3 times the c number is 4 all over 2 times the a number is 3. All right, so there's your setup, this quadratic formula. You should be able to tell immediately there are going to be two solutions. They might not be two real solutions, though. They might be imaginary, so that's why we have to do this. All right, so check it out. 4 times 3 times 4, that's 12 times 4 is 48. And so I would just kind of cross that out and write 48. And then I have to do 4 minus 48. 4 minus 48 is negative 44. So I'll have negative 2 plus or minus square root of negative 44 all over 6. Now here's the next thing that people kind of struggle with. You're going to need to be able to, to simplify that square root of 44. Now we know the negative means there's going to be an i in it. But you want to break down the 44 using a square root that you know. We've done this lesson a few weeks ago. I know that I can break 44 into... 4 times 11. I like the number 4 because I know the square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2, so I'm looking at 2 times i times the square root of 11 right there. This is going to be 2 times i times the square root of 11. At which point, the only other thing that I, I really need to do is I can cancel. I notice all three of these numbers are divisible by 2, so if I reduce that, I'm going to be able to reduce this into negative 1 plus or minus i times square root of 11 all over 3. And that's two answers, right? That's two answers because one of them is if you use the plus and one of them is if you use the minus. But that's your two answers. Now, I want to show you something, okay? If you go to Gold Adder, I've got a, I've got a site for that. So if you go to the math sites... And find the one that says quadratic formula. Quadratic formula. We're going to be able to do this. Okay. So what you'd have to do, though, is, is make sure to type in those coefficients. So help me out here. Um, that first coefficient was 3, I believe, right? And then the next one was 2 and 4. Solve. So the first thing you probably notice is the graph doesn't have any x-intercepts. Uh, and of course it doesn't have any x-intercepts, all right? It doesn't mean there aren't any solutions. It just means they're not real solutions. But if you look real close, it gives you that solution. It gives you the, the negative 1 plus or minus i times square root of 11 all over 3. So notice there it is right there, right above the graph. Um, you have to pay attention to how it's written. The numerator is in parentheses. Um, I like it better the way we wrote it without parentheses, but understand that that's the exact same thing. Okay, so that, that calculator is going to be useful, I think, for doing the hardest part of this lesson. Let's move on. Sum and difference of cubes pattern. Okay. Well, you need to notice that this is a difference problem. It's subtraction. It's difference. All right, but what you have to do is... Translate it into something cubed minus something cubed. All right. So I think the, the first thing that you'll want to do is write 27 as a cube, or at least think of it as a cube. What number times itself three times would give me 27? Three, right? Three times three times three. So what you'll want to think about is, is not think about 27, but think about this as three cubed. All right. That's you know, that's a cube. We've got difference of cubes. 
So the pattern for difference of cubes, you just took a picture of it a minute ago, looked like this. Okay, and the first two are the same. And then this next one is opposite. And the last one is always positive. That's your pattern. Okay, I keep looking it up until you've got it. Um, I realize there's no Y in this problem, but it doesn't matter. In, in this problem, in this pattern, the Y is represented by my number three now. Okay, so if I'm looking at X cubed minus three cubed, all I have to do is figure, uh, fill in the pattern. I fill in the pattern X minus three, and then X squared plus... Now let's be smart about this. The y value is three. So I'm not gonna write x3, I'm gonna write three x. So just switch it around so we've got three x there. And same thing over here. If y is three, I've got three squared. And three squared is nine. Okay. So that appears to be something that I can factor. Okay, now, now remember though, remember, we can tell right away that there are going to be three solutions, right? Three zeros. We can even say, well, this is supposed to be equal to zero. We're finding the solutions. It's probably going to be easy for you to find one of those three solutions. What is one of those three solutions? What number makes that zero? Three, right? I know this equation has three solutions. One of those solutions is positive three. Now, you're going to have to do something with that other part to find the other two. And it, it, it looks like something that would be able to factor. You're not going to be able to factor this, though. Okay? You're going to have to use the quadratic formula for this. All right? So, um, negative b plus or minus square root b squared. Remember, this is b. So, 3 squared is 9 minus 4 times the a number is 1 times the C number is nine, like this, all over two times the A number is one. Four times one times nine is 36. And nine minus 36 is negative 27. So I would rewrite, I've got negative three plus or minus square root of negative 27 all over two. We'd want to be able to break down that 27. Square root of 27, square root of negative 27. I know there's going to be an I. But I'm going to write that as 9 times 3. Square root of 9 times square root of 3. Because I know the square root of 9. You don't use something that you don't know the square root of. You use something that you do know the square root of. So that would give me 3I square root of 3. This is 3I square root of 3. That doesn't reduce. On the last one, I was able to like reduce stuff, but I can't do that here, so I won't. And I'm going to have negative 3 plus or minus 3i squared of 3 all over 2. That's two of your answers. And then the other answer was positive 3. There we go. Now, just to be, just to be safe, let's go ahead and check it with the website. Let's go back to this um, quadratic formula and clear it out. Our coefficients were, hang on, there we go, 1 and 3 and 9, I believe. Is that correct? 1, 3, 9? Is that what it was? I think. You hit solve, and again, you're drawn to kind of to the graph, but the graph doesn't cross the axis. That just means there aren't any real solutions. Um, if you look right above the graph, you can see negative 3 plus or minus 3i squared of 3 over 2. Is that what we said? Negative 3 plus or minus 3i squared of 3 over 2. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. So then the last one, number 9, you've got x cubed plus 64. Again, Sometimes people have a hard time getting started because they can't see a cube there. But you have to think about what number times itself three times gives me 64. And there's not a whole lot of possibilities. There's just not. 
You can try a couple. Two times two times two is eight. Nope. Three times three times three is 27. Nope. Four times four times four. Use a calculator if you have to. That's it. That's 64. Four cubed right there. This is a sum of cubes. So you can look at the pattern. X cubed plus Y cubed equals the first one's the same. The second one is different. And the last one is always positive. There's your sum of cubes pattern. So when we have x cubed plus 4 cubed, I know that first one is going to be x plus 4. And then after that, x squared minus, remember y is 4, so let's write it backwards. That's 4x. And over here, we've got 4 squared, so it's going to be plus 16. Three solutions. One of them should be easy for you. What's the first solution? Negative 4, right? Negative 4 makes that thing 0. Don't forget, we're looking at what makes this equal 0. To find the 0, to find the solutions. All right? The other part, though, for the other part, we're going to use that quadratic formula. And I'm fine. I'm fine if you want to use the website. The coefficients are 1, negative 4, and 16. So clear that out. We had 1 negative 4, and 16. Two plus or minus two i squared of three. Notice there's no denominator this time. It's not because there's not a denominator. It's because it, it got canceled out. Okay, so whatever the quadratic formula did this time, it must have just canceled out. But I'm looking at two plus or minus two i squared of three. Two plus or minus 2i squared of 3. And that's it. If you want to rewrite it, you can. Negative 4 and 2 plus 2i squared of 3 and 2 minus 2i squared of 3. There are your three solutions. Only one of them is a real number. That means the graph only crosses in one place. The other two are imaginary.